Hallelujah. Good morning, Abundant Grace Church family, friends, visitors. Uh, welcome to Wednesday's edition of Faith and Healing School. I'm glad to be here with you guys again. And uh, hey, if you're, if you're new to one of our services for Faith and Healing School or any of our services, we'd love to hear from you. So feel free to go ahead and, and uh, comment on our stream, on our Facebook stream. We want to say hello to you. We want to welcome you. The pastors, the elders are monitoring that feed. So we want to say hello and, and obviously virtually welcome you for the time being. So glory to God. Um, Again, I'm really super glad you guys are here tuned in. And I want to encourage everybody today to really plug into to the Word of God. Um, it is life to us. It is absolutely 100% breath in our lungs and life to our existence. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. But before we do that, um, if you have your Bibles, open up to uh, Proverbs chapter 4. And before, while you guys are doing that, we're going to pray. Father God, thank you so much for an opportunity to be here today, Lord. We know unequivocally, 100% that you're going to speak to hearts and minds today, Father, and you're going to facilitate change in everybody that's listening right now. And we thank you in advance for that, Lord, and I thank you for your word. I thank you for the truth of your word, the light of your word, Father. And I thank you as we each and individually go deeper today into that word. You will manifest healing in bodies of people right now that are listening. You will grow faith bigger and bigger today, Father, and I thank you for that. I thank you for the anointing on my life to deliver your word, and as I yield to it, Father, speak through me your message, not my message, your message, and I thank you for it all. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So last Thursday when I was with you guys, and I'm going down the same line of what I was talking about, we were talking about a heart check, and we were talking about the word of God being rooted and, and planted in our hearts, not in our heads, but in our hearts, and not the blood pump, the organ of the heart, but in our spirit. And that is so important, uh, friends. It's just so important. It's everything, like I said, it's life to a Christian. And this morning, I want to specifically talk about the heart, the heart, um, the spirit, and the, the God's word being a medicine. And that's what we're going to look at this morning. And we did leave off last Thursday with this verse of scripture, or we covered it last Thursday, but it bears repeating. And this is the line we want to go down. We're still talking about the heart. We're still talking about the spirit, but we want to look at the importance this morning of God's word to us as believers, as it pertains to healing. Amen. So Proverbs chapter four, uh, starting in verse 20 says, my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. So it's really just kind of sums up what I was just talking about. We have to keep, we have to uh, give attention and continue to give attention to God's words. And where do we see God's words? In the word of God, right? And how does faith come? Faith also comes by hearing. Hearing what? The anointed word of God. So how do we give attention? By spending time every day in the word. And I know we say this all the time, but there's a reason for that. There's a reason why we always, always talk about spending time in the word personally, hearing the word individually in services, um, with all the, you know, the tools that we have available today as Christians, with great teachings that are available online. You know, for you guys that may be new here, you know we have AGC TV on it on YouTube. You will see every single message that's been preached for years available to you, you there. But that's how we give attention to God's word, spending time in the word, hearing the word. And we have to, have to give attention to to it. If we don't, we're opening ourselves up for the enemy to continue to work or try to work in our lives. Amen. So we need to incline uh, your ear to my sayings. Do not let it depart from your eyes. And again, that's just uh, emphasis on spending time in the word. Do not let it depart from your eyes. How do we as Christians let it depart from our eyes? Well, quite honestly, we start to slip back and not spend time in the word of God. And then in that case, the opposite would be happening. We're allowing it to depart from our eyes. 
not a good thing. You know, I know I administered along these lines a couple of weeks ago that my concern was that I was seeing people start to fall away as far as numbers on like the live stream live services. And you know, we were talking and encouraging people not to do that. Especially now, you know, we just got that uh, order that came down from Trenton yesterday that the stay home order has been lifted. So that's another step to getting back to a normal life. And when we think of a normal life, now that we have all this ability to go back out and, and gather in bigger groups and have barbecues and all that, is to allow the word of God to depart from your eyes. And we can't do that. You know, at the beginning of this pandemic, we saw more and more people on live streams, more and more views on Facebook, even after service, uh, after the services were posted and they're starting to dwindle because people are, you know, they were so into the word, right, at the beginning of this pandemic, but they've allowed it to depart from their eyes because things are getting back to normal. And that is not a reason to allow the word of God to depart from your eyes. It can't be so. If you're still believing God for healing in your body, you're still believing God in faith for anything, and you allow the word of God to depart from your eyes, you're setting yourself up for a longer wait time. Can you say amen? So keep them in the midst of your heart. We talked about that last Thursday, the word of God being rooted in our hearts, in our spirits, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. So what I wanted to look at right now is that word health, the Hebrew word for health in the verse of scripture in Proverbs 4 uh, in 22 is actually a word that means medicine, a cure, and a healing. So we could literally translate that verse or expound on that verse by saying, for they are life to those who find them and they are medicine and a cure and a healing, amen? So isn't that just awesome, awesome news? And what we're gonna look at today though, there's so many schools, there's, there's believers and unbelievers that don't hook into the fact that God is still in the healing business, that God's made provision for divine health and healing for everyone. They don't believe that. And it, it's a shame that obviously unbelievers don't believe that. They don't know, they don't have light on the subject of healing, but unfortunately, believers as well don't believe the whole 100% uh, plan of God for healing for everyone. So reason number one that we know that it's God's will to heal us is God's word is a medicine. So if God's word is a medicine, it is God's will to heal us. But not only to heal us, God wants you cured. Healing denotes the fact that something may come back. Cured means it's done, it's over with, and it's completed. You're never gonna deal with it ever again. Now that's good news, right? Amen. So, but again, like I said, unfortunately, church people and unchurched people don't believe that it's God's will to heal. Or they believe that God will, own, will heal, but only if he wants it specifically for an individual. So basically, they believe that God is a respecter of persons. And the word of God tells us God is not a respecter of persons. Whatever he did for brother or sister so-and-so, divinely healed, manifestation healing over time, whatever it is, he will do for you. So both schools of thought, you know, people that believe it's not God's will to heal or people that believe it's only God's will for certain individuals to be healed are wrong, are 100% wrong. So let's back that up and let's work that out in scripture and let's prove why it's wrong. So is the word of God, is the uncompromised word of God for everyone? And if you say, I don't know, I can tell you and show you why it is. For God so loved the world that he gave us Jesus. It doesn't say for God so loved some of the world, for God so loved all of the world, that's what it says. Not some of the world, all of the world. It doesn't say God only loved these people and that people and certain people. For God so loved the world, he gave us Jesus. And the word of God tells us that Jesus was the word made flesh. 
So the word of God is for everyone. Can you say amen? And we just talked about God's word being a medicine to all your flesh. So if God gave us Jesus, and Jesus was for everyone, and Jesus was the word made flesh, and the word of God is a medicine, then healing has to be for everyone, because Jesus is for everyone. Friends, that's good news, and that bears repeating, and I'm not going to repeat it. I'm going to encourage you to go find that in the Word of God yourself. Spend time looking that up. If you have any doubts in your mind today that it's not God's will to heal you, you need to get a revelation that, that God so loved the world, he sent Jesus, and Jesus being the Word made flesh, and that Jesus was for everyone, and it's God's will. God's Word is a medicine, therefore it's God's will to heal everyone. And I guess it does bear repeating because I did say it anyway. Glory to God. God wants somebody to hear that today, this morning. Maybe you're struggling in an area. You know, maybe the condition that you've been dealing with in your body has been going on for a long time. Okay. There's, I get that. That's okay. Don't let the devil put you under condemnation saying, what kind of Christian are you? You're not healed. Or the enemy trying to say, Nope, God only wants to heal some people, and you're not one of them. If the enemy's whispering that in your ear today, that's a load of garbage, okay? That's exactly what he wants you to believe, the lie, not the truth of the Word of God that said God's Word is a medicine, it's for you 100% today, and God wants you healed. It's the desire of God's heart for you to be healed, you know, I always say this, if you can characterize or sum up the character of God in a couple of words, just two words, I always say love and a giver. God is a God of love and he's a giver. And he loves you so much, he has made provision for healing for you already. So if that's you out there, you know, maybe you needed to hear that today, that maybe the enemy's been coming hard against the fact that you've been standing on healing. Uh, you know, I know that any time I stand on the word in any area, the enemy doesn't just say, go ahead, good luck, I'm happy for you, you keep standing on God's word. No, the enemy wants to bring fear. The enemy wants to bring doubt. The enemy wants to get you into a place where you start magnifying the lies he's bringing versus the truth of the word of God. And he'll distort scripture. You know, that's why we always talk about the um, watered down gospel, the compromise word of God being so dangerous. It's a distortion of light. It's a distortion of the truth of the word of God. And the enemy will twist it. And you might say, well, pastor, why is that? Well, he did it to Jesus. In the wilderness, when Jesus spent 40 days and the devil came to tempt him, he distorted the word of God. It's dangerous. So the only way we know and can keep it in front of our eyes and in our hearts is to spend time in it. Amen? Amen. So think about this. If you don't spend time in the word, and the word of God is medicine. The word of God contains everything to do with the manifestation of your healing, but you don't spend time with it. Now let's look at it from a natural perspective. If there was a cure right today for something like COVID-19, a cure that we 100% knew worked, and you were dealing with COVID-19 in your body, and all of a sudden the news media comes out and says, we found a cure. And it 100%, no doubt, will heal you. But you don't take it because it might not be God's will for you to be healed. Wouldn't you be like, what is that, nuts? If somebody said that to you, you'd be like, that's nuts. Of course I take it. It's a 100% guarantee of a cure. They've done all the research. All the science backs it up. Of course you take it. But yet we don't take the medicine of God's word as our healing because why? It's something we have to stand in faith about after we get it down inside of us. You know, I, I get questions a lot or have in the past about 
if God is in the miracle business today, which he is, and he has an opportunity and an ability, or I should say an ability, not an opportunity, but an ability to heal you instantaneously, why doesn't it happen? And friends, I don't know every reason why it doesn't happen, but I know what God's put on my heart about what he, he's shown me of why it doesn't happen. You know, and when in doubt, stay on God's side. When you don't understand something, stay on God's side. That's great piece of something we all need to do. But when, when you don't have an instantaneous manifestation of healing, right? You're in a healing line and it doesn't happen right away for you. During that period of time, if you continue to stand in faith, because it's all about standing in faith for that healing, so much happens and transpires and transform, transforms you while you're standing in faith, while you're allowing the word of God to take root in your heart, while you're keeping it in front of your eyes. Well, what are you doing? You're growing spiritually. Your spiritual muscles are growing. They're being built up because there's healing like we just talked about, and then there's cured. You know, so we all have to be so built up that when that healing manifests, we will never allow it to come back. Because we, the enemy's gonna tell you once you're healed, no, you're not, no, -uh. no, 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 no. Feel that, feel that, hear that symptom, you know, whatever the doctor just tell you, eh, I'm not sure about these tests. No, we have to receive our healing and we need to stand on the word to keep our healing the cured kind of healing that Jesus wants for us. Amen? So if we take the word of God, just like the medicine, just like a pill, just like what we looked at in the natural, it would certainly, it does certainly, and will absolutely heal you. And it doesn't have to make sense. You know, I, I know I talked about this, I think, last Wednesday night, and I always talk about this, is the fact that so often when God tells you to do something in the natural, it's not going to make sense to you. Why? Because if it made sense, there's no faith behind it. There's no need to put faith behind something that you can always reason out in your head. Now, God might give you something that does make sense, right? But the, many a times he'll give you something that doesn't make sense to do. You know, maybe you know, God woke you up in the middle of the night tonight last night and said, you know what, go to that verse of scripture. And you don't know why, and you don't need to know why. All you need to do is be willing and obedient. And that's the same thing where healing is concerned. You need to be willing to spend time in the word, and you need to be obedient to do so. Not out of ritual, not out of habit, but out of a desire to go deeper in the things of God, in the truth of the word, in 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 the truth of healing belonging to you, amen? And God's word is medicine, not just to physical healing, but to every single area of our life. God's word as medicine pertains to healing in every single area. So if you're, maybe you're dealing with something else other than manifestation of your healing. You know, this is faith and healing school. It's not just about healing. It's also about building our faith. And Matthew chapter four, verse four says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So what does that mean? What, what food is to our natural body? The word of God is to our spirit, which is what we were talking about last Thursday. The word of God rooted in our hearts. And it's food to us. It's a medicine and food to our spirit. And if we never feed on it, we're never going to get the benefit and the results of what that food would do for us. Amen? You know, God's word talks about, as an early believer, you know, we, we, we are, uh, we're given milk. But then after a while, God wants us to have solid food. You know, and I know a lot of you probably experience this. I know when you're a new believer, there's a, like a triple portion of God's grace, it seems like. And God carries you along the way at that beginning. But at some time, he wants us and desires us to grow up spiritually. Get off, wean off the milk, just like a child does, and get into the solid food. And when we get into the solid food, it's our 
a part to get involved in it, to play in it, to, 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 to spend time in the word, and then start to apply the word as a medicine to any area of your life that you're dealing with you. Amen? You know, I have a question to you guys this morning, and my question is, um, have you been experiencing some sort of symptoms in your body um, or in any other area of your life? You know, a symptom of financial lack would be a zero balance in your checking account. Maybe you've been laid off because of what's going on or furloughed. That would be considered a symptom. So if you're experiencing some sort of symptom in your body, here's my encouragement. If you were experiencing if you're experiencing a symptom in your body, then what do we need to do? We need to increase our medicine. And what do I mean by that? If you're dealing with a physical symptom of, of a manifestation or a physical symptom of something you're dealing with um, that's, you know, you've been standing on the word of God for or coming to healing school for, then you need to spend time medicinally in healing scriptures. If, you're, if your symptom has something to do with financial lack, then you want to get into the word of God where prosperity is concerned. God's word is a medicine to every single area of our life, not just healing, but every area. You know, when we get to that point, and you know, we so often talk about this church, it's, and it's because it's so 100% true. When you're so close to the victory, the victory that already belongs to you through Christ, that victory of healing, that victory of prosperity, that victory in every single area of your life. Just like I said earlier, do you think the enemy is gonna leave you alone? Is he just gonna be like, okay, go for it, have your victory, I don't care if you're a threat to me? Because that's the truth, church, that's the truth. When you get the manifestation of your victory, you are a threat to the enemy. And quite honestly, you're a threat to the enemy all the way. If you're continuing in faith on your journey to the manifestation of what you're believing God for, you're a threat all the way. And the enemy knows it. And he's going to continue to come and then come harder when the manifestation is close at hand. You know, the enemy is going to see you going deeper with the word. Right? He's going to, he, and he's going to want to stop you. He's going to want to come and throw barriers up in your life. But what are barriers? Barriers are just something we need to break down to get our breakthrough. You can't have a breakthrough without a barrier. You need something to break through. And every single time the enemy brings something else as a barrier, that's another opportunity for us to believe God, go deeper in the word keep it in front of our eyes, root it in our heart, and break through another barrier. And when we break through another barrier, that's just another level you've come up to. You know, I know we've been experiencing some things, and I'm talking about myself and Jody, and I know Pastor Eddie's been talking about this a little bit too. I caught a, a, you know, some of healing school yesterday. I was a little bit busy work-wise. But, you know, the enemy doesn't want to let us alone, right? Because we're a threat to him. And I know that we're coming up to a higher level here at AGC. And that higher level is a threat. And you guys are connected with us. You're part of AGC. So the enemy just doesn't want to see manifestations of victory. Because we were a threat before, and we're going to be a quadruple threat today. And he knows that. And he just wants to keep throwing barriers, keep throwing situations, keep throwing things up. But we need to look at ourselves as barrier-breaking Christians. Because why? We already have the victory. You know, if you were to, in the natural, an army knew that their battle was already won, would they have a problem fighting it? Absolutely not. You already won. You know, I had a time machine. I went forward, like back to the future, right? I had a time machine. I went forward, and we're going to win. All right, awesome. Can we fight the battle then? Sure. But that's what we do as Christians. We already win. We already win. The thing we just need to do is keep fighting. It's not if, it's just when. We already win. It's just a matter of when. If we don't draw back. If we don't, if we, if we start pulling back from keeping the word of God in front of our eyes. 
Amen? Guys, it's so important. If you're dealing with circumstances coming harder and harder right now today, my encouragement is your breakthrough is probably right here. But it's going to take double and triple time in the Word to break through a barrier. Not what I've been seeing on Facebook, you know, with the live stream where people are like, eh, I'm not going to watch today or I'll watch it later and then never get to it. But yet they're wondering why the manifestation of what they're believing God for hasn't happened yet. It's one thing, allowing it to, to the word of God to just pull away from their eyes and not planting any more word in their hearts. Amen. Um, and honestly, so many Christians don't understand really what the word of God is to their spirit. And the other awesome thing about God is your mind doesn't have to understand everything we just talked about to get the benefit any more than you have to understand what the chemical makeup of gasoline is to know that it works in your car. Amen? Think about that for a second. You do not have to understand why the word works for you other than the fact that it's a promise from God and it's truth and it's alive. And if you believe that, you don't have to understand every, exactly why the spiritual principle of healing works. You just have to believe wholeheartedly that it does. Just like when you get in that car, turn the key, or in this case, in this day and age, push a button, and realize that that gasoline is going to do its job to fire up your engine. Amen? The word is spirit food. And it's healing to all our flesh. And it's healing to every area of our life. Amen? You know, <laughs> as, I was, as I was kind of putting my notes together, and uh, I administered along these lines a, a while back, and it just God, the Spirit of God just spoke to me this morning and said people need to hear this on the heels of the condition of the, of the heart we were talking about last week. So... When I say every verse is a medicine, that means every verse. So <laughs> what do I mean by that? You know, so often, let's say you're reading through the Gospels, and then you have, like, all the genealogies, right? From Adam forward to Jesus, you know, all those genealogies, even the Old Testament genealogies, they're all contained within there, right? And so many times we skip over them. And we're like, oh, it's just a bunch of names. What do I need to read that for? Well, you need to read that because every verse, every word from God is medicine. And you might say, well, pastor, what do the genealogies have to do with God's word being a medicine? Well, here's an example of what. For example, if you read through all those lines, right, all the lines from Adam to Jesus, okay, that's an example of every generation that God was faithful to. Can you say amen? God was faithful, and God's word is alive. And what God did for the generations before, he's still doing for us today. So every single word of God is medicine, including the genealogies. Just think of that. Every time you read those genealogies, if you put a name, you know, Jesse begot David, or whatever version you read out of it, you know, David, the son of Jesse. All you, if you put a word in there and say, was blessed. Think about that. You know, David, the son of Jesse, was blessed. And just keep going. And then end it with you, that you were blessed. You'll have a re new revelation of the blessings of God through the generations for those who just relinquish the control of their lives over to Jesus. Amen? And I always encourage people to do this. I do this myself. But if you're believing God in any area, right, before you get into the Word of God, before you, you get, you know, into your personal, intimate reading time with God, just continue to thank Him that the Word is life to you, right, that it's medicine to your flesh. And while we read it, eat it, hear it, keep keep taking your medicine. Guys, I can't stretch this and stress this enough. It's all about taking our medicine. It's all about building our spirit. Psalm chapter 34, verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Well, oh, taste and see. Did you ever think about that? 
guys? Did you ever think about that? That the Word of God says, taste and see. Not just see, not just hear, but taste and see that the Lord is good. So when we read the Word in faith, you're be believing that much more is happening in you than what you understand. You, we taste it just like a food to our bodies. Like I said earlier, no more milk, solid food. We're, 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 we're diving so deep into the word that we can see it and we can taste it, that the Lord is good, amen? And just because you don't, like I said earlier, just because you don't understand how it works doesn't mean it won't work. You don't have to understand it. When you take a natural medicine for a situation in your body you're dealing with, do you really understand how it works? You know, if, 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 if I went to the gym and I'm sore and I pop a, an Advil or a Tylenol, right, because I'm sore, and the pain disappears, do I really understand the chemical makeup of that Tylenol or that Advil and how it gets into my bloodstream exactly after I take it and how long it takes and what it's, what it's made of and what it does to pain? I have no idea. All I know is that take it, it works. Well, friends, I got news for you. All you need to know is take it and it works. It's that simple. We don't need to know the chemical makeup of Tylenol. We don't need to know the spiritual makeup 100% of why the word of God works. We just need to know deep in our spirit that it does work. Amen. You know, the word of God talks about having faith as a child, right? And sometimes we need to go in reverse a little bit. We need to grow up spiritually, but at the same time, have the attitude of a child where the things of faith are concerned. And what I mean by that is this. You know, we look at healing in the, in the Word of God. We look at prosperity in the Word of God. And we try to reason out how God's going to come through for us. And like I said earlier, so many times in my life, the way God came through made absolutely no sense to me. So why do we need to have faith like a child? Because if you tell a child something, no matter how far-fetched it is, they'll believe it 99.9% .9 of the time, right? And if God's word is true, and we all know it is true, and God said, I want to heal you today, by his stripes you are healed, and by his stripes you were healed, and we just need to have the faith of a child to say, gosh darn it, I'm healed. That's simple. And it doesn't need to know why. We just need to believe it. You know, just like you tell our children something when they're little, they believe it. Why? Because it's coming on an authority of somebody they trust, their parents, okay, or their grandparents, or their siblings, or their aunts or uncles. But we have Father God, who there's nobody more trustworthy than, telling us that we're healed. We just have to have faith of a child and believe it, and you don't have to know why it works. You just need to know it does work. Amen? So with that being said, we've already established that God's word's for everyone, and the word will heal you. Psalm 107, verse 20 says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Now, we all know that Jesus ministered so often to a multitude of people, and the word of God is specific about telling Telling, uh, telling us in the word that they heard and then they were healed, right? He, and he healed them all of their diseases. So the word 100% heals. Every word of God is healing. And there's no word of God that is devoid of power. Okay, every single word of God, every single word in the word of God, every single scripture has power. And everything that comes out of God's mouth, Right, God's word inspired by people through the Holy Ghost to write the written word of God is God's own word. And it's powerful. It's spiritual nutrition for us, life to our flesh. You know, anytime the word of God is preached, anytime the word is taught, anytime the word is read, there's life coming out of it. And it has a cumulative effect on us month after month. That's why it's so important, friends, to be so sold out to the fact that we can't allow the word of God to depart from our eyes. It's gotta be first and foremost in our lives. It's a cumulative effect. And where healing is concerned, 
think about it in the natural for a second. When you take a medication, for example, you're dealing with uh, bronchitis, and they give you an antibiotic. And how often do they tell you it's going to take a little while for the antibiotic to build up in your system before you see results? You don't instantaneously take the antibiotic and the symptoms completely disappear. It's a time factor. It's a cumulative event, right? It's, it, it builds up, it builds up, it builds up. Well, the Word of God is the same way where healing's concerned. We have to keep building it up. We have to keep taking our medicine, taking our medicine, taking our medicine. Guys, if you're not getting a hold of this, really what I'm getting to the nitty gritty of is we need to continue to spend time in the word. We need to still spend time deeper and deeper. Okay, this is not a time where we're starting to open up, right? Where we're, we're starting to get back to normalcy. Right, I, you know me. I won't use. I don't use that term, new normal, because I believe we're getting back to the normal that exactly where God wants us believers to be. But as we get back to normal, and as you start to relax, and you know, so many people dealing with anxiety and stress of what we just went through for the last three months, starting to shrink back from the Word of God. You know, church, I, I can I can talk out of my experience with you know ministering to people for years um, where our recovery ministry was concerned and i've said this so many times but it absolutely bears repeating because it's 100 percent true and what the truth is i'll get people that are dealing with stuff in their lives or did get people that were dealing with stuff in their lives and man they were having success you know, and things were starting to change for them and turn around, whatever area that was. And yeah, a lot of times it was healing, right? And they're having such a measure of success. And you see it. You see the growth. They're spending time in the Word. We see them in church. You know, they're praising God. They're, they're on fire. They're hooked up. The Word is working for them. Then all of a sudden, they stop coming to church. We see them every other Sunday, maybe an occasional Wednesday. Next thing, it's one Sunday a month, maybe no more on Wednesdays, right? And all of a sudden, we maybe see them once in a blue moon. And all of a sudden, they would come back and be like, uh, I don't understand it. My life is out of control. I don't know what happened. Things were going so good. There's a question I always ask that I know the answer to before I ever ask the question. And that question is, how much time are you spending in the Word of God? There's always one of two answers, not enough or none. It's that simple. But yet, if we saw our natural medicine working in our bodies and it was working, we'd continue to take it without any question. But yet, our spiritual medicine of the Word of God, it's working, it's working, it's working, it's working. But now things are going good. So rather than press in deeper, right? Rather than press in deeper to the things of God, knowing that not to, for, not to uh, scare anybody, but really prepare everybody that there's something else is gonna come down the pike, right? That we need to be prepared for, that to go deeper, to go deeper, to go deeper and continue to go. No, nope, people shrink back. Oh, I, got, I got that victory, I'm good, I'm good now. Those words, are not good words for uh, something to come out of a spirit-filled Christian's life. I'm good now. And you are good now because you've been good from the day one, from the day you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, sa Lord and Savior. You were healthy, whole, prosperous, and righteous. End of sentence. But it might not have manifested yet. And as it manifests and it finally happens, you get the victory to say something like, I'm good now, I don't need the word anymore, I'm done. Friends, you're just setting yourselves up for, for chaos. You're setting yourself up for the enemy to wreak havoc in your life. There's nothing more that the enemy wants is to a Christian to shrink back from the things of God thinking they already have, that the victory is theirs and they're never, that's it, you're good to go. Friends, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of Christianity. It is not instantaneous, I'm good, never pick up the word of God again. It doesn't work. And that was, that's what I wanted to encourage you with today. And I wanted to end. I wanted to end with us repeating 
uh, some, conf some good positive confessions. You know, again, I, I don't know who out there, I know everybody needed to hear this, but I think I really firmly believe in my heart there's some people that were really struggling with dealing with um, why did so-and-so get healed and I'm not, and the enemy coming really hard against um, what you're believing God for because your victory is just right there. You know, whatever it is, and really just in my spirit, I just got fear. I got anxiety. I don't know if that's you, if that's something you're dealing with out there. Maybe it was pertaining to what we've been going through as a world. Maybe it was something that's been around before that. I don't know. And you started to waver a little bit, started to question God where divine health and healing is concerned. And I, I believe people, like I said, needed to hear it and some specific people dealing with some specific things. So I wanted to end today with some really good confessions. So let's all repeat this together. Just say this, healing power is at work in me. The word of God is life to me. The word of God is medicine, healing, and health to all my flesh. The word of God is medicine to everything that pertains to my life. God is in the healing business. God wants me healthy, whole, and healed. God sees me healthy, whole, and healed. God's word is truth. God's word is life and God's word is breath to me. Healing power is at work in me. Well, glory to God. I think we kind of hopefully have some new light on the fact that God's word is medicine and just encouraging you as we close this out today, guys, just continue to feed on the word. You know, I was thinking about this this morning as I was uh, getting ready. And just thinking about kind of trust, trying to do the math in my head. I think we started Faith and Healing School back in September of 2019. And man, there's got to be, what, Tom, 180 something? 149. I did the math probably wrong, but 149 Faith and Healing School sessions. That's 149 opportunities to go deeper in the word of God, not only where healing's concerned, but in every area. And if you're new here, go back and watch them on AGC TV one. If you've been coming to healing school since the beginning, go back and watch them on AGC TV one. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. You know, the worst thing a Christian could ever say, or one of the worst things a Christian could ever say is, I've heard that all before. Friends, that is not good. So many times you're gonna hear a message, you're gonna hear it again, you're gonna get something more out of it. Your faith's at a different place than it was back in September. You're gonna get something else out of it. Keep going back, keep going back to the word, keep going back to stuff you know, that you listen to here at Healing School, here at the church months ago. Continue to feed on it as you fill your spiritual storehouse with food. It's gonna sustain you guys. Strong spirit of a man will sustain him. Well, glory to God. Again, I thank you guys so much for being here with us today. Uh, don't forget to come back tomorrow at 10.30 for Faith and Healing School. And I just want to throw this out there because I want to do this. We kind of do this at every meeting. And uh, if, you, if, you, if you want to partner with us, we'd love to have you partner with us. Um, and, you know, if you want to give into the ministry, that would be awesome. We, we, we definitely are experiencing supernatural blessings here at the church, here in so many people's lives, you know, that I've talked to and... and um, 
you know, have been in contact with. And God is just so awesome. And if, if, you, if you enjoy what we're doing here, we'd love for you to partner with us. So a couple different ways you can give. You can text your offering to 732-856-5050 or visit us at www.abundantgracechurch.com. Just hit the giving tab and you'll be prompted on how to give online. So just as a reminder, don't forget tonight, we have Wednesday night service. I'll be back for, uh, to minister tonight. Uh, so come. Guess what? You have another opportunity to fill up spiritually on the Word of God. So come out tonight, 7 p.m. Uh, God's got something He wants you to hear, and I 100% know that. And um, don't forget tomorrow again, 10:30, and every Tuesday through Friday, 10:30 a.m. for Faith and Healing School. So God bless you guys. And also, I just wanted to put this out there. I know a lot of you have been reading on the patch. Uh, whether or Asbury Park Press or wherever your local paper is, that Governor Murphy has lifted and changed the stay-at-home order. So we will keep you guys posted of what and when we're going to reopen in-person services. So I'm sure you guys were all thinking about it because some of you have asked us about it. So um, stay tuned. You'll get a text. You'll get an email. And, uh, you know, you'll get a voicemail and you'll, we'll pr let you guys know when our plan for reopening the church is. So glory to God. Father God, we thank you so much for touching hearts and minds today, Father. We thank you for revelation, light onto your word where healing's concerned today, where faith in every area of our Christian walk is concerned. And we thank you for changing people right now in Jesus' name. Well, glory to God. We will see you guys tonight at 7 p.m.